Hey there, CyberMDs. Today, we'll be discussing hypertension. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that we can continue to provide free medical education resources to students around the world. Additionally, please be sure to let us know what we're doing that you like, as well as things you believe we could improve on. Let's get started. Hypertension is a common condition that affects one in every three adults in the United States and is becoming increasingly prevalent among children. The 2017 ACC and AHA guidelines define hypertension in adults as a blood pressure of greater than or equal to 130 over 80, and the JNC-8 criteria specify greater than or equal to 140 over 90. For testing purposes, you should just be able to identify is this low, is this normal, is this high, or is this dangerously high? Let's get started. Hypertension can be classified as either primary, also known as essential, or secondary. Primary hypertension accounts for 90, maybe 95% of all of the cases of hypertension and has no detectable cause, whereas your secondary hypertension is caused by a specific underlying condition. Hypertension may also involve the pulmonary system or systemic circulation, uh, but for this lecture we're going to be focusing on systemic hypertension. Uh, it can also be classified as benign or malignant, and we'll get into that later during this lecture. Before we dive too far in, I really just wanted to keep things simple and give you a, a concept, a framework to think about hypertension. So hypertension is elevated pressure within the vasculature. And if you think of the vasculature as a container for the blood, and you start thinking about, well, how can I elevate the pressure within a container? Uh, the two easiest ways to do that are to a, squeeze down on the container, which is what you're seeing on the left. So if you have, uh, maybe you have catecholamine excess and it's squeezing down on that vasculature, on that container, then that's going to cause an increase in pressure. We know that from uh, the laws of physics. Or I can add things into the container while trying to maintain the same size of the container, which is what our body does. So if I add volume, if I add a bunch of um, salt and therefore water into my diet, uh, I'm going to be adding a lot of volume into my vasculature, thus increasing uh, the stress on those walls and increasing the pressure on those walls. Uh, and then if you'll see all the way to the right on the bottom of this uh, slide, that's an atherosclerotic plaque that I've added there because uh, you can also just add what I'm going to call stuff into the vasculature. If you add RBCs or if you have this narrowing, that's also kind of increasing the pressure inside of um, of the lumen of your blood vessels. And uh, I just have to clarify that atherosclerosis does not necessarily cause hypertension. This is kind of a which came first, the chicken or the egg kind of situation. Um, these things are often found uh, together at the same time. It can be difficult to discern which one caused which. Primary hypertension, also known as essential hypertension, refers to hypertension with no known underlying cause. It accounts for, again, around 90 to 95% of all hypertension cases. Although the exact cause of primary hypertension is unknown, several risk factors have been identified for which you can use the scholar's mnemonic to remember. So first in this mnemonic is smoking. Uh, smoking is very well known uh, risk factor for hypertension and you should always be encouraging your patients to stop smoking. Uh, the C in this mnemonic is silent. Uh, a high salt diet has been associated with an increased risk of hypertension. Uh, excessive salt intake can lead to fluid retention and an increase in blood volume, which in turn can raise blood pressure. Uh, therefore, limiting salt is an important part of the prevention and management of hypertension. Uh, also, high alcohol intake has been associated as a risk factor for uh, primary hypertension. Uh, obesity is another well-established risk factor for hypertension. The extra weight increases the workload on the heart, leading to elevated blood pressure. Uh, stress and lack of physical activity are also uh, risk factors for hypertension, likely due to their effects on the body's cardiovascular system. Uh, age is a risk factor. Any, anyone greater than 65 years old is automatically at risk for hypertension. Uh, race, African the people of African heritage uh, have a higher risk of developing hypertension than other ethnic groups do. 
Um, conversely, Asians actually have a lower risk of developing hypertension compared to other ethnic groups. Uh, so that about sums up this mnemonic. We'll move forward now to secondary hypertension. So secondary hypertension is due to an identifiable etiology, and it's going to account for, again, about 5 to 10% of your cases. Uh, it can be remembered, or some of the causes can be remembered, with the CHAPS mnemonic. Uh, the CHAPS mnemonic stands for uh, Cushing syndrome, hyperaldosteronism, uh, coarctation of the aorta. Uh, it's kind of a cheat with the A to call it aortic coarctation. Uh, pheochromocytoma. So those are four things you can remember right there, the C, the H, the A, and the P. But the big one is stenosis of the renal arteries, and there's two underlying causes of renal artery stenosis that I'd like to review that are really, really important for step one. So renal artery stenosis is a common cause of secondary hypertension. It occurs when there is a narrowing of one or both renal arteries which supply blood to the kidneys. The narrowing may be caused by atherosclerosis, which is a buildup of a plaque in the artery walls, or fibromuscular dysplasia, which is a non-inflammatory, non-atherosclerotic disease that affects the arterial walls. Uh, so stenosis is going to decrease the blood flow to the glomerulus, which is a cluster of tiny blood vessels in the kidney that filters waste and excess fluid from the blood that decrease in blood flow is going to trigger the juxtaglomerular apparatus, also called the JGA, to secrete renin. Renin is an enzyme that converts angiotensinogen, a protein produced by the liver, into angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 is then converted to angiotensin 2 by angiotensin-converting enzyme, and then angiotensin 2 is going to raise the blood pressure by contracting arteriolar smooth muscle, increasing the total peripheral resistance, and promoting adrenal release of aldosterone, which increases resorption of sodium in the distal convoluted tubule of the kidney, leading to expansion of the plasma volume. So this process leads to hypertension with increased plasma renin and potentially unilateral atrophy due to the low blood flow of the affected kidney. Uh, this can also be bilateral atrophy if both are affected. The unilateral atrophy means that only one kidney is affected and it becomes smaller due to the decrease in blood flow. Uh, so all of this is very much in contrast to primary hypertension where there again is no identifiable cause and neither feature of uh, increased plasma renin nor the unilateral atrophy is going to be seen. Uh, and so that's, that's when you have atherosclerosis, right? So you have this plaque buildup. Alternatively, but similarly, fibromuscular dysplasia is a rare disease that tends to affect young females on the exam, uh, and it's going to affect the walls of arteries, particularly the renal artery. The disease is characterized by abnormal growth and development of cells that make up the arterial wall, leading to the formation of abnormal fibrous and muscular tissue within the arterial wall. So that can cause narrowing or constriction of the artery, which can lead to high blood pressure, reduced blood flow to the affected organ, and other complications. Fibromuscular dysplasia is, again, a type of arteriopathy that is going to affect these younger women. That's really key on the exam to hone in on that. Uh, the cause of fibromuscular dysplasia is not well understood, but it is thought to be related to genetic as well as environmental factors. Fibromuscular dysplasia can occur in any artery of the body, uh, but again, it's most commonly found in the renal artery, making it relevant to our discussion surrounding hypertension. Uh, so the two most important causes of stenosis include atherosclerosis, which is typically going to be in your older male, and fibromuscular dysplasia, which is typically going to be in your younger females. All right, moving on, hypertension can be classified as benign or malignant based on the severity of elevation in blood pressure and the associated clinical presentation. Benign hypertension is also referred to as essential or primary hypertension and is the most common type of hypertension. It is usually asymptomatic. Benign hypertension is a chronic condition that slowly damages blood vessels and organs, including the heart, brain, and kidneys over time. Again, if you leave benign hypertension, essential hypertension, primary hypertension, all of these are the same thing. If you leave these untreated, it can lead to complications such as heart attack, stroke, kidney failure, vision loss. But the big thing here is that this is going to be asymptomatic. 
This is very much in contrast to malignant hypertension. Malignant hypertension is a rare but severe form of hypertension that comprises probably less than 5% of all of the cases of hypertension. It's also known as hypertensive emergency or accelerated hypertension. Malignant hypertension is characterized by a marked elevation in blood pressure. Typically, this is going to be greater than 180 over 120, and it's usually associated with acute end organ damage, so not asymptomatic. There is acute end organ damage. The symptoms of malignant hypertension can include anything from blurred vision to severe headache, can include confusion, shortness of breath, chest pain, and even seizures. Malignant hypertension can arise from pre-existing benign hypertension that suddenly worsened, or it may occur de novo. It is a medical emergency that requires immediate hospitalization and aggressive treatment to prevent any kind of irreversible damage from happening to the vital organs such as the heart or the brain or the kidneys. The treatment for malignant hypertension involves rapidly lowering the blood pressure by about 25%, and you're going to do this using IV medications such as like a nitroprusside, labetalol, nicardipine, and you're going to want to be monitoring and managing any complications that you see in these patients. Clinically, hypertension is usually asymptomatic until this end organ damage occurs with the brain or the kidneys or the heart or the eyes, but when it does, you really have to be on your game to catch it. If it's present, the early symptoms, again, can include like headache, dizziness, ear ringing or tinnitus, and then some kind of chest discomfort, and then it can progress to those things which we discussed earlier. Hypertension is going to be suspected if in-office blood pressure is persistently elevated on two or more separate measurements and is confirmed with out-of-office measurement. This is something that I forgot to mention earlier but is very, very crucial and is important to remember for your boards. Hypertension is suspected if in-office blood pressure is persistently elevated on two or more separate measurements, typically more than two weeks apart, and you can confirm this with out-of-office, at-home blood pressure measurements. In conclusion, hypertension is a common condition that affects a significant proportion of the adult population with primary hypertension accounting for the majority of cases. While the exact cause of primary hypertension is unknown, several risk factors including age, race, stress, obesity, physical inactivity, high salt intake, high alcohol intake, these are all risk factors that have been identified. Lifestyle modifications such as regular exercise, stress reduction, healthy eating, these things can help manage primary hypertension. Secondary hypertension, on the other hand, is due to an identifiable etiology and accounts for a smaller percentage of the cases. Common causes of secondary hypertension include renal artery stenosis from atherosclerosis and from fibromuscular dysplasia. Understanding the causes and mechanisms behind hypertension is essential in its prevention and management. We hope this lecture helped. Thank you so much for tuning in, CyberMDs.